Tonight on Q2, a shooting that was caught on camera. He was just so passionate. He could have a conversation with somebody, and it was like he's known them for 20 years. It happened right outside our Q2 studios back in August. Tonight, for the first time, we hear from the family as they continue their fight for justice. Plus, a moose remains on the loose. See all these cop cars lined up against 17. I was like, wow, and what's going on now? One of the police officers came over and he said that the moose is back. This moose isn't budging tonight with police and FWP are doing to get the moose on the move. I'm Alina Howder. If you are ever looking for a private place for your pup to play, look no further. We'll tell you more coming up. And this driver turned Roundup into his own personal racetrack. Now police are on the lookout after he got away. Your MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Our top story, it was a road rage incident that in a split second turned into the fatal shooting of Michael Duran. And it was all caught on our Q2 security cameras. Now, it appeared it could be a quick case. That investigation is still ongoing tonight. New at 10, our Phil Van Pelt speaks with his family for the first time as they continue to deal with the tragedy while still seeking answers. Michael Duran was shot and killed where I'm standing, right outside the Q2 studios here along 4th Avenue North. And nearly two months later, no arrests have been made, and even the name of the suspected shooter is yet to be released. As a son, this kid was special. Like, he... From the time I was five years old, he knew my favorite color, he knew what flowers I liked. Sylvia Duran will forever cling to memories of her son, Michael. The 29-year-old lost his life on August 20th, shot and killed during a road rage incident that turned violent. Months later, the person who shot him has yet to be arrested or even publicly identified. It's a little frustrating because we're so far away and um, we've gotten zero information. I mean, I called the, the police and they did give me some information. I was grateful for that, but I had to call them. Sylvia and Jessica are Michael's mother and sister. They've spent the past two months reliving what happened in their minds, but are nowhere close to finding closure. You, know, you replay it in your head, what could have escalated to that point? And there's nothing to come up with to take somebody's life. You don't bring a gun to a fist fight. According to Michael's mother, the doctor in the ER told her her son wasn't just shot once, but multiple times. She was able to say there was at least five bullets, but um, she couldn't confirm it like completely, but she said at least five, she, she saw at least five. Even so, the person who shot him was never detained. Billings police tell MTN that detectives are in the final stages of their investigation. County attorney Scott Twido has said investigators have to rule out the possibility the shooter fired in self-defense. Duran's family is convinced Michael was murdered and they want the person who shot him to pay. I don't know about life in prison because that's not going to bring my son back, but I do want justice. I want them to pay for the crime they committed. I think that's fair. In the meantime, this family will continue to mourn their son and brother, a man who they say could connect with anyone. That was just his personality his entire life. Like, he just always had a compassion for the underdog. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News. Some breaking news, a 55-year-old woman is in the hospital after being struck by a train tonight in Billings. I shot this video around 9 o'clock. 27th Street remains closed at the railroad tracks as the investigation continues. That woman was transported to the hospital with what are described as serious injuries. The Gallatin County community continues to mourn the loss of Bozeman High School teacher Kelly Fulton, who died when he was hit by a truck while riding his bike. Now, Fulton was a longtime Billings resident who graduated from Billings Senior and still has many family and friends here. Tonight, the Bozeman Police Department updated MTN on the investigation as they still look into charges. Captain Joe Swanson says an arrest can still be made in the case, but they continue to go through witness statements, photographs, and videos as they determine appropriate charges. Fulton died this weekend from injuries suffered last Tuesday after he was struck by a pickup truck that ran a red light at an intersection. The Gallatin County coroner confirms that Fulton died from a brain injury caused by blunt force trauma. Police did confirm that Fulton was wearing a helmet at the time of the accident. Now, Fulton's memorial service is right here in Billings tomorrow morning. That service gets underway at 11 at Mayflower Congregational Church on Polly Drive. Law enforcement is asking for help finding a driver who turned the city of Roundup into their own personal racetrack. It was all caught on camera and happened right in front of police as the driver changed lanes and quickly reversed directions in the middle of the road before finally fleeing. 
Our Charlie Kleps has more on this dangerous driver. This intersection and roundup doesn't usually see a ton of traffic or aggressive drivers, but Monday night was the exception. And in order to get a real sense for what happened, you've got to see the video. This was the scene Monday night at about 9.30 in roundup. Quiet Main Street looking more like a scene out of the Fast and Furious. The gentleman in the car, whoever was in the car, had no regard for public safety at all. Shane Kaling owns a trucking company and has lived in Roundup since 2009. He says part of the reason he moved here was to avoid dangerous situations like this. If this incident would have took place in the middle of the day, it could have been catastrophic. I wouldn't have thought twice to seen this in Atlanta or Philadelphia, but to see it right there in our town, um, it's disturbing. Ken Many is the owner of Big M Realty, which is located just across the street from where the reckless driving took place. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. They come around that corner, they were in a hurry. He was shocked when we showed him the video. Uh, yeah, I just saw the video. I didn't, hadn't heard anything about it before. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's kind of amazing. Uh, we just don't have that kind of stuff here. The Muscle Shell County Sheriff's Office posted the video on social media, hoping to track down the driver since the car was also reported in Billings 30 minutes later. The Billings Police Department tells MTN that officers tracked the car's movement but never engaged. I think everybody grew up in my time. They, uh, they had their fun too. And uh, we all do our crazy things as, as growing up as a kid. Uh, but it's this thing that happened in front here was something different. A scary scene that could have easily ended up with someone hurt. It's just one of those things that you never know if you're going to get that phone call because someone else was careless. In Roundup, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Russian forces have ramped up missile attacks in Ukraine. They come after an attack on a key bridge to Russian-occupied Crimea. Officials say at least 19 people were killed yesterday when Ukrainians endured one of the largest Russian air attacks in the nearly eight-month-long war. Russia targeted cities and key infrastructure in the latest round of attacks. In an emergency meeting, Ukrainian President Zelensky called on the leaders of the G7 countries to send more air defense systems, warning Russian President Vladimir Putin could escalate the conflict even further. In a joint statement after that meeting, President Biden and other leaders of the group of seven countries vowed to continue to provide financial and military support to Ukraine, promising severe consequences if Russia uses nuclear weapons. We asked you to share some of your pictures of the brilliant fall colors, and Loretta always comes through with some great photos. Not only did we get the colors, but an equally beautiful sky as we start looking out around the Big Timber area. Thanks for sharing that one, Loretta. And then we had a lot of pictures from northern Wyoming. Thanks very much. Tim sent this one. You can see the colors starting to change here close to the intersection of 212 and the Chief Joseph Scenic Highway. So how about some more fall colors? This one was closer to Lovell in and around the Bighorn Mountains. We did pick up a little bit of snow today. You can see just a little bit here on the ground into the Bighorns and then also into the Beartooths as well. And how about some brilliant fall colors as well? This one was on a road trip, but still, it's worth showing those great reds. If you've got a picture you'd like to share with us, weather at ktpq.com or use our free downloadable weather app. Now, Red Lodge Mountain saw a little bit of snow this morning, a sure sign that ski season is just around the corner. Skiers can expect to see some changes on the slopes this year. Opening day is still over a month away as the mountain currently plans to open on November 25th. One of the changes you'll notice this year is the yurt being moved to the top of Miami Beach, but the major change will come next year when the ski area receives a new lift from Utah. We will take out the Miami chair in the spring and then we will put in the new lift uh, in the summer. All in on the project, we're spending about two and a half million dollars, which is a pretty significant investment for us here at Red Lodge. That plan has been in the works for about five years now, but will finally happen after finding the used lift this spring. A moose remains on the loose here in the Magic City, and today even had Billings police in pursuit. At one point, he even spent some time lounging on the campus of Rocky Mountain College. Tonight, our Kelsey Marison speaks with Fish, Wildlife, and Parks on their plans moving forward. 
moose is still on the loose in Billings, but Fish, Wildlife and Parks is keeping a close eye on the situation with the help of the Billings Police Department, who's been monitoring the young moose as he makes his way through the Magic City. We were canoeing down the canal from Rose Park and there was a, I thought it was a cow or a horse. Few people canoe the big canal that runs through Billings, and it's safe to say even those who have, have never encountered wildlife like this. And Duchess and Lee Gordon didn't just encounter this moose, they almost ran into it as he swam in the canal. The moose doesn't want to hurt you, and it's just scared, but again, if you put yourself in a bad spot with a, an animal that big, you can get hurt. Luckily, the moose took off after the couple's dog barked and ran down the street, followed by several vehicles. But the Gordons were concerned, so much so they called Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Right now, um, our hope for the moose is that it finds its own way out of town without too much FWP or Billings Police Department um, interference. Chrissy Webb with FWP says wildlife officers are closely monitoring the situation. And it can be a tricky situation, relocating a wild animal that weighs more than a thousand pounds. Um, there have been some instances, both in Billings and other places, Places around the state where we have had to relocate the moose. That's logistically challenging um, for FWP staff, for any law enforcement that have to be involved with the local police department, um, and can also create some safety risks for the human. So for now, the moose is still in town. FWP continues to monitor the animal, and so do Billings police. I see all these cop cars lined up against 17. I was like, wow, I wonder what's going on now? And uh, he, uh, one of the police officers came over and he said that the moose was back. Michael Young didn't hesitate to help police when she realized her roof would make a great vantage point for police officers Tuesday morning. Uh, then I just told him to, you know, why don't you go up on the, on the roof and you know, see if you can see him from there. A sight capturing the attention of everyone from police to backyard bird, I mean moose watchers. That's why I love Montana. I mean, this is the biggest city we got and right in the middle of it, we still got wildlife. Right in the middle of it, but hopefully on his way out soon. In Billings, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. Well, still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2. If you've ever wanted to turn your yard into a dog park, well, there's now an app for that. We'll introduce you to the Yellowstone County residents who came up with a unique idea. And in sports, a recent Bronx star is now back on the sidelines, leading the way for this year's Billings Senior Volleyball Team. We'll hear from her coming up in a bit. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.